In this quick tutorial, I'm going to show you how to effectively use configuration override files for RetroArch. Configuration override files are used when you want to make a change from your defaults, but you don't want those changes to be applied to every single game. And we can do this on a per game, content directory or core basis. Now these are not to be confused with core option files or remap files as they contain different options for RetroArch and I will be covering those in another video. So we're going to jump straight into it and firstly I'm going to show you how the main configuration file is saved. The main configuration file for RetroArch is in the root of the file system and it's down at the bottom right here alongside with what is essentially the default backup. However, the one that is named RetroArch.cfg is the one that is being used. Only the main RetroArch settings are saved to a configuration file. So all of these options underneath the settings tab here. So absolutely nothing from the quick menu is saved to a configuration file and that includes any core options and any remaps. So just remember only these options here are saved to a configuration file. You can save the main configuration file upon exiting RetroArch or you can save it manually if you want to. So if we go down to the configuration option here, we have the save configuration on quit option. If this is on, it means that the .cfg file is going to save upon exiting RetroArch. And if this is off, you'll need to save it manually. And I'll show you how to do that now. If you go down to the configuration file from the main menu, we've got save current configuration. So just press that and it will save any changes that you've made. And you also have the option to save new configuration if you want to. Now that I've got the main configuration file stuff out of the way, I'm going to show you how to save these settings on a per game, per core or per content directory basis. And to ensure these are loaded up when we start a game, we want to go down to the configuration file, go down to the load override files automatically and you want to make sure that this is on. Now from here, you want to start up the game that you want to configure for. And I'm just going to use this one here as an example. And as soon as the game starts up, you want to go into the quick menu. And if we scroll pretty much all the way down to the bottom, you'll see the overrides function here. And this is what we use to save a configuration file to a specific core, content directory or game. So let's say for example, I want to change the graphics backend for this game specifically. So you need to back out to the main RetroArch settings here as these are the only options that are saved to a configuration file. Then I'll just go into drivers, go into video and then change this to whatever I want. So in this case, I want this to be in Vulkan. Then I come back out of here, go back into the quick menu, down to the overrides function and then I would save game overrides. So now this game specifically is using Vulkan and not OpenGL. Now we can also apply that change to an entire core if we want to. So any game that runs with Flycast here will be using Vulkan. So I've just save core overrides to make sure that happens. Now saving to a content directory comes in handy for cores that run multiple platforms. So like Flycast here, it doesn't just run Dreamcast games, it also runs a Thomas Wave and Naomi Arcade games. And there are some options that I want to apply to the Dreamcast games, but not the Naomi and the Thomas Wave games. So in this case, using core overrides would not be useful to us. We would need to do this on a content directory basis. And if you don't know what content directory means, it's the folder in which the game is located. So in a nutshell, this option will save and apply any changes to all games that reside in the same folder as the game that you have currently loaded. So I'm just going to save that one as well so I can show you where all three of these are saved to. These are located in the config folder of RetroArch, so just go into that one. And then you want to find the folder which is named after the core that you're using. And for this example, that's Flycast. And you can see that we've got all three of our configuration override files here. So this is the per game override file, this is the core override, and this is the content directory override. RetroArch does prioritize using these in the following order. So firstly, it will look for a per game override, then a content directory override, then a core override, and if it can't find any of those, it will just use your normal RetroArch config file. If a configuration override file is being used, RetroArch will tell you upon starting the game. 
So let's start the game and you can see it tells us in the bottom left hand corner there. When a configuration override file is being used, it disables the automatic saving of the main configuration. So even if we have this option on here, it will not save any changes to the main configuration upon quitting. And this is RetroArch's way to protect your main configuration file. Also, any further changes that we want to make to a configuration override needs to be saved manually. And this is because there is no way to automatically save to a configuration override. So say for example, I wanted to change the video scaling. So let's pretend that I want to have this in 16 by nine. So I'd make that change, come back out, go into the quick menu, down to overrides, select which option that I want and make sure that I save it. And if you want to delete any of these, you must do so from the file system as there is no option to do it from within the UI. Now, how you utilize these configuration override files is really down to yourself and your specific use case. But the things that I commonly find myself having to use this function for are things like changing the graphics backend for multi-platform cores. So like Flycast here, I want the Dreamcast games to run in Vulkan. I want the Naomi and Atomis Wave games to run in GL Core. And with Naomi 2 games, I want to be using Direct3D 11. So I can do that all by content directory. And things like changing the scaling. So for native widescreen games, these need forcing into 16 by nine, which I can do on a per game basis here. So they're just a few things that you can do with this, but it's completely open and you can do whatever you want with any of these settings here. There we go, that's how to use configuration overrides. Now I will be covering core option override files and remaps in another video. So if you wanna keep up to date, you know what to do. And if you liked today's video, slam me a like. And apart from that, Go play some games. Adios.